I've got to get to our guests. There's the little chicken chuppies. <laughs> <just here. laughs> chicken little chuppies. There they are. There are the lads straight out of Manchester. They also happen to be brothers and best friends in what could be their most honest interview yet. It is Corrie, Emmerdale and Love Island stars Ryan, Adam and Scott Thomas. Hi, guys. Hi, wow. guys. Good to see Hi. you. So good to see you all. It really is. <laughs> oh, you little chicky. You little chicky chappies. It's always good to see all of you. It's always good to see all of you. Uh, but, Ryan, you're here to talk about your podcast. Love the title, Manx on the Mic. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Whose idea was it? Were you all up for it or did anyone have to be persuaded? Um, I think we all toyed with the idea and we talked about it. And especially after Mike's in Mumbai... Um, we felt the time was right and then Global came to us and asked us would we do it and we talked and, you know, we're, we're, we're very close. We've got a WhatsApp group. It's just uh, done on a bigger scale and we're just talking about, you know, what we talk to each other about all the time. So it felt it felt like the right Ryan time. Didn't want to do it. Yeah, Ryan, so, you, uh, Ryan didn't <laughs> want to do it because he doesn't <laughs> like the sound of his own voice. <laughs> so, so it wasn't until it was received really well by everybody else that Ryan's finally now bought into it. Yeah, uh, now he's like, yeah, it's yeah. my idea. The old chestnut. Um, so, Adam, <laughs> is it a bit like therapy for you all? Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> um, you know, when we first got asked to do a podcast, we didn't know, you know, what we were walking into. We were like, should we, should we not? But I feel like we got so much more out of it than we expected. Um, and, yeah, it was definitely like therapy. And it was just so nice. And I think it just came at the right time as well. It was in the first lockdown. Uh, and I think we needed a little bit of structure in our lives as well. So it was nice just to switch off for an hour or two a day and just talk about I, our childhood I, and I where think, we want to go. And what I we think as brothers, we always know what each other are thinking. Yeah. But to actually say it out loud... It was a little bit different, wasn't it? Like, yeah. I feel like I know Adam's thinking all the time, but for him to actually say it out loud was like a mm. different... It was like therapy, it's weird. Yeah. Well, we, we run um, our own Loose Women campaign called Stand By Your Men, and we encourage men to talk, you know, because often they don't. Um, so, Scott, yeah. have you found by talking that you've learnt things about yourselves or about each other that possibly you might not have known before? Yeah, for sure. I mean, last year, I really... Um, I really documented my journey. I decided to go sober last year. I did like 12 months and I realised... Come on, Scotty, by the way. Come on, mate. Well done. Proud yeah. Because I had, a big, I had a big background of being a bit of a party boy, so it was a big step for me. I thought, you know what? I really wanted to share that story because I feel like a lot of people would have been able to resonate with it. So I was really talking quite openly and I realised the importance of talking out loud because it helps so many people. So now my brothers are starting to realise that as well and they've been a lot more open with their own problems as well because I feel like with the platform we have, it's really important to put it out there. Yeah, I mean, I was that inspired with, with, with what Scott was doing. Like, I said, right, that's it, that's me done. I'm going <laughs> to quit drinking for six months, put it on my Instagram. Three weeks. Three weeks are lasting. <laughs> Three weeks. <laughs> and has your, Don't look to try it. Has your mum uh, learned things about you that she didn't know? Oh, my God. Um, yeah. um, well, do you, know, do you know what? We, we got, uh, I got a phone call off my mum and she said, I'm really shocked. I said, why, mum? She said, well, I don't know anything about your growing up. I said, what do you mean? She says, well, I'm listening to all these stories on the podcast and it's all coming out. Wow. And um, <laughs> I suppose we didn't realise at the time what we were actually saying. But, yeah, we were telling all our childhood stories <laughs> about all the lies we told growing up with our mum. <laughs> And um, she got to hear it all for the first time on the podcast. So we didn't think about that about that at the time. But yeah, she was. Um, I'm glad it's the past now because we've all moved on. Otherwise, we'd still be in trouble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Adam, obviously, we've all yeah. known each other for many, many years and been through some scrapes together. So I was interested to see how your sobriety was going. <laughs> <laughs> but, I just, yeah. but I remember reaching out to you, Denise, as well, because I was like, I wanted, to, I knew that you'd stop drinking as well, and I remember messaging you to, you know, what's it like? Because it's just one of those things that I've always wanted to do. You know, I always felt like it was something that was holding me back. It's not um, too late, you know, now, Adam, because even if it. you've fallen off the wagon, you can get back on again. But I wanted to ask you because obviously you guys deal with a lot of stuff because you're because you're all three incredibly funny guys. You know, we've all had so many laughs. 
But I know, Adam, that you sometimes conceal certain things behind your humour and that you have actually had some kind of body insecurity issues as well, which I know this podcast has helped you talk about. Is that true? Yeah. Thank, Do you thank, really feel it's helped you? Out, <laughs> um, yeah, it's OK. Pull your T-shirt tight and I'm only joking. No, but honestly, Adam, no, true, I think... True. That sometimes we do use, we either hide behind alcohol or we hide behind humour to cover up certain yeah. things. So I think talking like this, honesty, it's so important for people who look at you and think you wouldn't have those insecurities. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And to be honest with you, before this podcast, like I've never really talked about it to anyone before. And it, that's what I say about it being like therapy was we were just, I don't know, it just came out. And once I, I actually talked about it and told my brothers about how insecure I was about my body, um, it just felt good to get it off yeah, my chest. I... But like with us three brothers, we, we very much wear our hearts and our sleeves. And if anyone listening to the podcast can take any, anything away from this, then um, I, I think it's that, you know, don't be scared to talk. Don't be scared to speak out either. Yeah, I think for me um, to hear Adam speak like that, because I knew Adam had a bit of a problem because Adam was always, I hope you don't mind me saying, was always a bit of a, like a, a chubby kid. And as, <laughs> and, and, and as he's grown up, he's held on to that. And he, he comes into me, Scott, I'm lucky, fat, I'm fat. I'm like, mate, please, Adam, you're not, like... And then for, and he always bottles it up, and then for him to talk about it, on the podcast, I was like, you know what, this is doing not only us so good, it's going to do so many other people so good to hear this. Fantastic. Also, yeah. I'm proud of him, man. Scott, did you find that loads of people were then getting in touch with you because you opened up about um, struggling with gambling, didn't you? Did you find yeah. that that encouraged people to open up? Honestly, Frankie, I couldn't believe it, right, because... Because it's in the past, I just started talking about the gambling. When I was about, I think about 21, I had a problem with gambling. And because it's so many years ago now, you sort of put it in the past and you park it. And I'm, I'm over it now. So I was just talking about it quite flippantly. But then I've had so many people reach out and say, Scott, I've got so much from you talking um, about this. It's something I'm going through. And I'm like, do you know what? It's, it's just shows, doesn't it? Like how talking about even experiences in the past, it can yeah. really help somebody. And like, yeah, it's just been mind blowing, to be honest. Um, Ryan, you, you mentioned your dad earlier. Um, we were saying, you know, when you did Manx in Mumbai, um, we all absolutely loved watching uh, that. And so sadly, your, your dad passed away in November. So our huge condolences to, to you and the family. Um, you. Is this something that you will talk about on, on your podcast? You know, how is that? How are you all dealing with that as well as all the upbeat subjects you talk about? Um, well, we filmed the podcast, uh, uh, it was a while ago now, wasn't it, boys? Like, a couple of months ago. October mm -hmm. time. Uh, maybe, maybe I, I'm not sure the time, but uh, yeah, we, we're, we're talking about the past. So my dad was, um, was still present at the time. So I think, you know, listening to it back and all the memories has been really good for us because, you know, we're reading back amazing memories of our childhood with our dad and our mum and, you know, family, and I think that it's great to sort of, you know, listen back with fond memory of, of what we've um, what we've talked about. Yeah, I um, think there's a clip. Um, there was a clip from the podcast where me, Adam, and Ryan were talking about our dad, and we were talking about him in awe. And this is obviously when he was alive. We we're going, there's something about my dad. He's just got that star quality and everything else. And it's so good to just realise that, like. <laughs> We just cherished him so much then, and we still yeah. do now, and he's just always going to live on through us. So, yeah, we're just, um, yeah. we've got so many good memories in the podcast where it highlights that. Well, it's lovely to have those memories, isn't it? Some people don't have that. Um, I'm sure he'd be very, very proud of you all. Um, it's always lovely to talk to you. Can you imagine getting a word in edgeways on that podcast <laughs> with you three? <laughs> uh, listen, it's Manx on the mic. Sorry, it's, guys, sorry. It, it's on Wednesdays. Uh, thank you so much for talking and, you know, talking so openly and honestly because that's mm. what it's all about and that's what our campaign, Stand By Your Men, is all about. Thank you, guys. And this is quite a big deal for us. <laughs> this is quite a big deal for us. We're on Blue Swimming for the first time ever. First time, yeah. Yeah. Thank Let's you for having us. <laughs> come back, come back any time. You know, we look forward Thank to the you. day you can actually come into the studio because it will yeah. happen. We'd love to have you all Fingers sitting here crossed. with us. Okay, take care, Thank boys. Thanks so much, guys. See you. Thanks, guys.